What else can they do to bring guys here? Well, I mean, win, Fred. Yeah, win. I guess, well, Which is, it, it becomes a conundrum, but look, Golden State went through this, right? For 30 years, they were a laughingstock franchise in the NBA. You know what happened? They drafted a guy named Steph Curry. You know what happened after that? They drafted a guy named Draymond Green. And they drafted Klay Thompson. And they picked up an Andrew Bogut. All of a sudden, they became good. All it takes is getting good players. The Hawks have to find a once-in-a-lifetime star, maybe like the Cavs did with LeBron James. Yeah, maybe, yeah. <laughs> right. Sounds I'm just easy. saying it ain't Come easy. On, man. It sounds easy, but it's that's not what, easy. That's what, but that's what has to happen because the NBA always has been and always will be a player's league. This is not a parody league. This is not the NFL, guys. The best players on the best teams win. So some of it's going to be luck. Some of it's going to be good fortune. And some of it's going to be Tony Resler, the owner, opening up that wallet and getting somebody in here. Why did this happen? Well, um, where do you start? If you start with maybe Tank Bigsby not going out of bounds, yeah. maybe possibly staying in bounds, or you could have went for it on fourth down, even if you run some right. more clock, leave a little bit less time. There are a lot of things that happen in that Iron Bowl that could have went different. Maybe you don't lose to South Carolina. Maybe you don't give up a 25-point lead. I mean, where do you want to start? Yeah, I, I don't want to sound naive. <laughs> like. We know the coach is on the hot seat. How hot is it? Extremely. I mean, it's going to be hotter than it is here today. <laughs> oh. I mean, it is in fuego, <laughs> as they say, man. But no, but seriously, it's an unfortunate situation. Yeah. Obviously, there was the whole investigation back in February into all the allegations. Most of it, all of it pretty much proved to be false. But... It kind of hamstrings during the recruiting. And by the way, they had two guys at least transferred it over here they're going to see. And J.J. Pegues is uh, Ladarius Tennyson. Lost 19 guys in the portal. Had two assistant coaches left as far as coordinators. I mean, how far do you want to go down, down the line? Yeah, here? we can talk. The real candidate or not, I have no earthly idea. That's why we have Nabias Wilborn, who covers the team for AL.com. Nabias, great to uh, see you again. So give us uh, the lay of the land. What's happening on the uh, coaching search first? Well, a lot of people are still high on Lane Kiffin. People within the program, boosters who I have phone relationships with, they definitely seem to be confident that Lane will be the first choice. However, athletic director John Cohen, who will make the decision here, the $1.25 million man, is keeping things very quiet. He's not going with the traditional search committee that Auburn normally goes with. He's actually making the decision himself. He'll get input from Rich McGlynn. General Ron Burgess, those people, but ultimately it will be his call. And so don't be surprised if maybe he goes outside of the Lane Kiffin, the Hugh Freeze, the Coach Prime names we continue to hear, because it's going to be Cohen's high. I'm not saying he's going to hire Mike Leach, but I am also saying that it could be interesting. Stern has a dress code where it forced players to no longer wear the gold chains and the earrings and those things of that nature to wear. They wanted them to be more dressed up because they were afraid of that hip-hop image. So it only furthers the divide, and it only furthers the divide in the city of Atlanta that's already shown that the divide is there. That's why I mentioned the Atlanta Braves moving to Cobb County instead of actually serving the inner city and keeping the Atlanta Braves in Atlanta as opposed to taking them out of the metro area. So, yeah, it'll have an effect, and it's going to be... A negative fact, the question is, how will Steve Kunitz, um, the new CEO, the rest of the ownership group and whoever they bring in fix it? It can be fixed. There just has to be some honest conversations. And both sides, white and black, have to get over themselves and each other.